it has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing messages of hope around the world. In 1962, David Bernays and Charles Sawyer were on a mountain expedition investigating the Cordillera Blanco mountain range in Peru. Along their journey, they decided to investigate Glacier 511. Their findings were absolutely frightening. They saw that an enormous piece of the rock bed had been compromised by the glacier and just the slightest disturbance would release an avalanche that would spell certain doom for the town of Yungay in the valley below. Equipped with this ominous warning, the men contacted the authorities and newspaper. Instead of being grateful for the warning, Bernays and Sawyer were thrown into jail and threatened because of the hysteria they might cause. They were told to recant their story or face lengthy prison sentences. The men were able to escape the country and the authorities were able to suppress any warnings that may have leaked. Everything went back to normal and for several years, nothing happened. However, on May 31st, 1970, Bernays and Sawyer's worst fears became reality. An undersea earthquake named the Ankosh earthquake tipped the scale at 7.9 on the Richter scale the short quake set off a devastating turn of events. The movement of the earth shook loose the damage to the rock bed of the mountain, sending a colossal avalanche, which included an 800 meter section of the glacier down the mountain. There was so much debris, it buried the entire city of Yungay, killing 20,000 people instantly. It was a warning that was ignored. The complacency and suppression of the truth by the authorities led to tragedy. We are right now living in a time of warning. Jesus warned us almost 2,000 years ago that this world was going to end. He gave signs to watch for that we might know how soon he is coming. In Matthew 24, Jesus gave us signs of his return to give hope to this helpless planet. Jesus taught that there would be signs in the religious world, the political world, the natural world, and in the world of society. Last week, we reviewed the signs we are seeing fulfilled in the religious world. We see a rise in false teachings and a general pulling away from Bible truth. We also studied the increasingly political tensions and wars in our world today, knowing that those signs in the political world point again to the coming of Jesus. But there are other signs in the political world. There has been a dramatic rise in the potential for world destruction. The world's ability to destroy itself is sobering. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 18 actually cautions us about this. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Humanity's technological advances to have weapons that can destroy the earth is much greater than it ever has been. Just think of the countries with the known capacity for nuclear weapons. The United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, and Japan. They have more nuclear weapons on hand to destroy the earth many times over. And countries like India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel and Iran are all suspected by some to be capable of producing some type of nuclear weapon as well. Walter Lippmann's portentous words are a living reality. We are poised on the brink of the most calamitous conflict that can be imagined. Indeed, it cannot be imagined. What hope is there for this helplessly hopeless planet? only the return of Jesus. He will bring all of this turmoil and suspicion to an end. William Ripley, 
a journalist who covered the effects of the atomic bomb broadcast these almost prophetic words as he stood in the midst of the aftermath of Hiroshima. I am standing on the place where the end of the world began. 2,000 years ago, Jesus shared today's prevailing modern mindset when he spoke these words in Luke chapter 21 and verse 26. Luke 21 and verse 26. Men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. People wonder today, what do things mean for me? What does this mean for my family? Is there any meaning at all? What hope do I have for today? Is there any hope for tomorrow? Jesus also warned that there would be signs in the natural world. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7, Jesus had these words. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. The study of things happening on and to this earth shows an increasing intensity of natural disasters. The increasing frequency of tornadoes and earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, and fires point to this planet being in distress. Sadly, famines are happening all over this earth. While we in the West are rarely plagued with famine, many of us will never forget the tragic pictures of Ethiopian small children and youth emaciated and hungry. The United Nations reports that there are over 35 nations experiencing food shortage. One sixth of the world's population is undernourished. 10,000 people per day. Over three and a half million people per year die of starvation. In 2012, the Associated Press reported that 80% of the people living in the conflict of the Sudan were eating only one meager meal per day. But famine wasn't the only sign Jesus gave. He also said that there would be pestilences. What is a pestilence? A pestilence is a strange disease that afflicts human beings, crops, and the environment. In addition, a pestilence can be new diseases that spring up around the world. Just think of some of those new diseases that were unheard of in previous generations. Lyme disease, Marburg virus, HIV AIDS, mad cow disease, and the bird flu and H1N1, just to name a few. Many medical experts believe that our current antibiotics will no longer be able to provide a defense against the strongest pathogens. Diseases of the plant world have grown increasingly complex to deal with. The loss of soil has weakened plants' natural resistance to pests and disease. Resistance to pesticides and herbicides grows stronger and at times requires more use of these chemicals, potentially causing further damage to the environment. Some have estimated that 50 to 120,000 premature deaths are caused each year by the 2.4 billion pounds of toxic pollutants released into the atmosphere. In 1992, 1,700 scientists met together and wrote a document entitled, A Warning to Humanity. They said the following, human beings and the natural world are on a collision course. Human activities inflict harsh and often irreversible damage on the environment and on critical resources. If not checked, many of our current practices put at serious risk the future that we wish for human society and the plant and animal kingdoms, and may so alter the living world that it will be unable to sustain life in the manner that we know. Fundamental changes are urgent if we are to avoid the collision our present course will bring about. Did you hear these words? Human beings and the natural world are on a collision course. In almost prophetic language, these scientists confirm what Jesus predicted would be a sign of his soon return. Notice, they went on to say, no more than one 
or a few decades remain before the chance to avert the threats we now confront will be lost and the prospects for humanity immeasurably diminished. While these signs can cause great fear and distress, Jesus warned that they would happen. All of these events should draw us nearer and nearer to Jesus and rely on him in this time of trouble. In Matthew 24, 7, he also cautioned that we would see earthquakes in various places. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that worldwide there are on average more than 40 earthquakes per day. That is more than 14,000 earthquakes per year. Luke 21, verse 11 states this, And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The total chaos in the natural world has led many to wonder what is going to happen to this planet of ours. Describing this state of uncertainty and anxiety, Luke 21, 26 reveals these words. Men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Is there any hope for the future? Is there any hope for today? Our only hope, friend, is in Jesus Christ. The natural world continues to experience all types of turmoil. Tsunamis seem to be on the rise and occurring in various places such as Japan and Indonesia, Sumatra and Turkey. Many remember the tragic Christmas Eve Asian tsunami of 2004 in which an estimated 230,000 people died. The tsunami was set off by a, by a 9.1 magnitude earthquake under the ocean, which produced the destructive waves. Although in some parts of the world, the 2013 hurricane season was one of the least active in decades, hurricanes have in recent years been increasing in numbers and intensity. The 2005 Atlantic hurricane season, with the most named storms in history, culminated with Hurricane Katrina. The central Gulf states of the United States were impacted by this storm, leaving behind over $100 billion in damage. It had a $250 billion economic impact. Romans chapter 8 and verse 22 reflects. Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. These natural phenomena are like the labor pains of a woman, revealing that something is about to happen. Jesus has told us that that something is his soon coming. Jesus also taught that there would be signs in the world of society. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 and 38, Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 and 38. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. In Noah's day, there was rampant moral decay in the land. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, tell us what it was like in Noah's day. Genesis 6, all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 6 shares what it was like in Noah's day. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and that the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Man had reached such a point of degradation that God was actually sorry he had made mankind. Mankind was wicked to the very core. Genesis 6 verses 11 and 12 further emphasize the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt 
for all flesh had corrupted the way of the earth. Corruption, evil, and wickedness were the words used to describe the time of Noah. Jesus said that it would be the same way on the earth just prior to his coming. Over the last several decades, some of the greatest areas of moral decay in society have been the breakup of the family unit and complacent attitudes toward spiritual things and moral living. Over the last 25 years, the births of babies to unwed mothers has increased almost threefold in Canada. Depending on what part of the world you are in, 50 to 75% of all marriages end in divorce. Worldwide crime and violence are on the rise in intensity and in numbers. Author Scott Christensen speaks of the problem of densification. Densification is the general movement to city living. It is the urbanization of society. As humanity moves closer into urban centers, it places more of the population in smaller areas. This densification has led to many problems, but one of the greatest is an increase of crime and violence. The World Report on Violence and Health states, each year more than 1.6 million people worldwide lose their lives to violence. Many more are injured. Violence is among the leading cause of death for people aged 15 to 44 accounting for 14% of deaths among males and 7% among females. Jesus warned, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. This lawlessness and violence in society has many contributing factors, but no doubt many experts will point to the increase of violence in the media as a major factor. The statistics are astounding. On average, children watch three hours of television per day. By the age of 12, through media, they've witnessed 14,000 murders. In addition, there has been a large increase in the allowable foul language and sexual content in the media. It is no wonder that there has been such moral decay in our society. Economic uncertainty is another sign in the world of society. James 5 sums up our situation well. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. The banking crisis and collapse of major financial institutions brought to the forefront the greed that exists in our day. As one area in our world crumbles, it often has a domino effect on other areas as well, and it creates a more catastrophic situation. The Canadian press released an article entitled Bank of Canada, Ukraine tensions adding to economic uncertainty. While the Ukrainian tensions are political, they are affecting economics. And if a major or even local natural disaster occurred simultaneously, you can see how things could spiral downward very fast. Friend, the uncertainty is real. The signs that Jesus gave almost 2,000 years ago are being fulfilled with increasing intensity each day. We can see the signs in the religious world being fulfilled. The signs in the political world are all there. The natural world is in turmoil and society is in total decay. All the signs are pointing to the imminent return of Jesus. However, one of the most powerful signs of the return of Jesus is found in Matthew 24, verse 14. Matthew 24 and in verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. The gospel going to all the world is one of the most definitive signs that Jesus is coming soon. 
all around the world, people are more receptive to the gospel than ever before. Radio, television, and the internet have opened territories that couldn't be entered just a few years ago. Today, you can see that God is on the move. Thousands are being baptized each day. While there is a tremendous amount of work still to do, things are happening. Some good friends of mine led out in Bible prophecy lectures that took place in Angola. Over 8,000 people were baptized. Other friends have been involved in outreach in India, where over the course of 10 years, 20,000 people have become baptized followers of Jesus. Even in the Western world, where society has become disinterested in the church, places like New York and Chicago have seen explosive growth as the gospel is shared. God is on the move. His coming is very near. Are you watching? Will you be ready? It could be that the signs of the times that Jesus predicted that would happen globally are happening to you in a very personal way. Maybe in your life right now, you are searching for truth. Maybe you wonder if there even is any truth. Perhaps you have found it difficult to believe in the God you have been taught or have heard about. You owe it to yourself to come to the Bible and discover its truths. You can learn for yourself firsthand the truth about a loving God and his plan to give you an abundant life, both now and eternally. Maybe you are experiencing political tension and war in your family. I'm not talking about differences in political parties, but the wars and clashing of ideals that families experience particularly between the parents and children, where the various parties argue for their particular agenda and words are used like knives to cut and sometimes kill the ones that we should love and care about the most. Do others see our families as being perfect, yet within the walls of our homes there is violence, abuse, and neglect? God has something so much better in store. In a prophecy describing the days before Jesus returns, Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 indicate that there will be a call for people to repent and that the heart of the fathers will be turned toward the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Do you want that for your family? Jesus promises that he can begin that work in your family today. Maybe you see the signs in your life from the natural world. Maybe you're going through something right now that is out of your control, suffering from a physical illness, maybe from a physical hunger. Maybe you feel like there is a hurricane over your head and it is leaving its path untold damage to you physically, mentally. Jesus invites you to look to him who can say to the storms of your life, Peace, be still. The moral decay of society is prevalent because of what is happening in the lives of individuals. If you are someone who has witnessed, either personally or through the media, acts of violence and crime, if you have succumbed to the societal pressures to do what feels right, only to find out that it doesn't always end up right, if what you have been watching and participating in has led you in circles or driven you to despair, I invite you today to accept the invitation of Jesus, to look unto him who is the author and finisher of our faith, to look unto him who has promised to give you a future and a hope. You could be experiencing economic uncertainty in your life today, struggling just to make ends meet. Jesus again has the answer by asking us today to seek him first and in 1 Peter, he invites you to cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. In Matthew 24, the last sign that Jesus talks about is the gospel going to all the world. Today, the gospel is not just going to all the world, but it has come to you personally. Today, you have seen the signs in the world around you. You have seen the signs in your own life. And today you have the opportunity to heed these warnings of Jesus. Maybe you've been discouraged. Maybe you have slipped in your Christian walk. Perhaps you've never engaged in a personal walk with Jesus. Why not take the hand of Jesus and be encouraged to watch and be ready today? Maybe you're a faithful Christian and needed this encouragement to stay on the course. Friends, 
No matter where you are or who you are, Jesus desires that we would watch and be ready. Are you watching? The signs are being fulfilled. Why don't you today commit or recommit yourself to following Jesus all the way and watch to the very end while we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, the signs of the times are being experienced globally. We see them with our own eyes. We read about them. We know you're coming as soon. But the signs of the times are happening in our own personal lives. We have been affected. And today we come to you and we open up our heart and we open up our arms and we say, Jesus, please come and give us the encouragement we need. Today we give our lives to you, Lord. Submit to you fully. Give us the encouragement to continue to watch and be ready until the very end. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I want to remind you about our website, itiswrittencanada.ca. There you'll find resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I hope to see you next week. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.